What's cracking everybody? Welcome back to the channel. New video. Yes, those of you that are barely seeing the new setup, I decided to move from the kitchen more over here. Uh, yes, that is a video of me playing in the background. I'm trying to get my views up. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, today's video. Today's video is very interesting. Um, I don't write anything down, so I never know what I'm going to say before I turn the camera on. I think that's more, uh, I think it feels better to me at least that way, but it may tend, uh, has a tendency for me to ramble sometimes, but a lot of times you guys say you enjoy the rambling. So let me stop rambling now before I go, please. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Share the video, share the channel with other people you think uh, would find it interesting uh, and hit the like or hit the thumbs down. Now, I'm going to use this guy's name, but not his neighborhood just because it's a lot. I don't know where I'm going to go with it. I'm just going to tell you about this guy. So. When I was in New Folsom, when I first started my time, I met an older homie by the name of Kong, right? And side note, Kong was a very humble, very cool ass dude, man. Older homie. We uh well let me just let me just tell a story. Let me just tell you. So he had came to the yard, and I wanna I want you I want you to get an understanding of the kind of person that Kong was as much as I can relay it to you, okay? I remember him coming to the yard and um, he was always quiet. He would go work out by himself, by the handball court. Um, he didn't involve himself with anything. Although, you know, if you guys, you know, been around, you guys know, uh, my Sally had some, some weight on the yard. So I knew who Kong was as soon as he got there, as far as he wasn't into politicking, but he had a lot of, uh, respect. He had earned a lot of respect from several different legends and, um, he never abused it. He didn't carry himself that way. He carried himself humble. Like I say, he was a big dude. Um, and he just minded his own business. Right. Well, I remember this one Vato came. And uh, he was from the same county as him, same area. He's a real tall dude. And uh, he had just came down from Pelican Bay. And I remember being there when uh, Kong walked up to him. And Kong says, hey, ain't you so-and-so from, you know, wherever? And he's like, yeah, I am. And he says... Ain't your cousin so-and-so? And the author's like, yeah. And he goes, well, look, hey, uh, I'm getting at you respectfully and straight up. I'm, I'm the one that killed him. And uh, if you feel like we need to handle it, let's handle it right now. Let's go get our shit and let's do it. And the other author was like, ah, oh, nah, homes. it's all good. He goes, look, you guys were gangbanging. They were gangbanging. My cousin was gangbanging. It is what it is. I'm not going to push that issue. And Kong said, well, I got at you like a man in front of everybody, eh? face to face. I don't want to have to be looking over my shoulder. So if you got anything on your chest, let's just take care of it. And he's like, again, homes in front of everybody. I'm good. And I remember I was young, man. I was like, what was I, 21 years old? And, and Kong was probably 40. That other one was his age, but still I was like, damn, man. Kong did that. And um, Kong didn't walk around like with a big head. Cause, because to Kong, that's what you do. That's how you conduct yourself, right? And he went back to working out and minded his own business. Obviously, he always kept an eye on him. Well, I wound up going. I wound up picking up my shoot term not long after that. My first, my first shoot term. Uh, so while I'm in the back... Um, Kong shows up. He shows up to add say, right? And um, he had initially landed like three cells down from me. 
and I was okay and that was I was decent in chess. And he would call me, "Hey Holmes, hey you want to shoot a game?" I said, "Yeah." And it would it would crack me up because every time he played me, I would win, right? And and when I would beat him, he would be like, "I fuck this game. I fuck this chessboard. I can't see things on this chessboard." And I would see his, because we would make the chessboards out of Manila envelope, fold up the paper to make pieces. And I would see his fucking chessboard fly out of his cell. And then all of his chess pieces were next. <laughs> I was like, fucking Kong. Eh? And um, then he, he wound up moving to a uh, B section to sell it with somebody else. And um, once my cell, he transferred, he cut the chain before me to, to the bay. Uh Kong was like, hey, why don't you move in? Almost, we'll, we'll kick it. I was like, I'm, I'm going to get at him right now. So I get put in the cell with them. And uh, we used to chop it up, bullshit all the time. And um, I used to mess with Kong. Kong was probably, physically speaking, right, the ugliest Mexican ever born. Like, hands down, he was probably, if not, I used to tell him he was the ugly champion of the world, undisputed, and he used to laugh, right? I used to tell him, homie, Mexican people are beautiful, eh? There's no fucking way you're Mexican. <laughs> Man, that was going to be like, hey, homie, my back's hurting. Hey, can you walk on my back for me? Ah, oh, man, I would walk on his back and it gave me Oscar because his ribs were all like, Bumpy, they weren't even like a regular rib cage. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? He goes, I got hit by a car. Like everything that could happen to him happened to him. He had the funniest stories. Quiet dude, homo dude. Now, another glimpse into who he was. He had came back to Ad Seg. Again, he had came out, he had come from Pelican Bay Shoot. He was on the yard, you know, like I said, people knew who he was and he didn't carry himself like he was better than anyone. He was just humble, did his own thing. But one day he was working out on the yard and uh, a white dude had just came to the yard and Kong saw him and was like, oh, and I'm not going to get into all the specifics. All I'm going to tell you is this. Kong went to get a piece, didn't want nobody to know about it. He asked one of his little homeboys, hey, give me a strap. I need it right now. Don't tell nobody. His little homie was like, hey, homes, I got you, hey, whoever it is, I don't give a fuck who it is. Even if it's a hooda, I'll do that, homie. You're, you're my older homeboy. Just... And he's like, nah, 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 nah. So the homie's like, okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get you one. But what he did is he went and got at who was handling business there. And that bottle was like, nah. He went up to uh, Kong, hey, what's going on? And what had happened was the white dude had disrespected one of the legends in the shoe. So... The homie that had the spot was like, oh, no, we got we got more than enough people to deal with it. And Kong was like, nah, homie, that's not the way I was raised in the system. I was there when it happened. Therefore, it falls on me. He said, I will never have anybody say, is Kong getting soft? That author was there and he has somebody else do it. He goes, that's not me, homes. Kong said, I don't get involved in politics, eh? but if I'm there and I see it, I'm handling it when I get a chance. So Kong wound up whacking the dude and then. That's how he wound up in that state. This is just another glimpse into who he was, right? Now, while in that state, there was anybody that was in New Folsom at Sake back then, 95, 96, even 97, I think, maybe even later, I don't know. Um, in A5, there was a very, very good-looking female CEO, body for days, right? And um, I had a lot of juice with her. You know what I'm saying? Like, allegedly, I may have felt on different things on that woman. Uh, she was down, right? Uh, she's no longer with the department. So I, I, I'm, I'm okay with saying that, right? Uh, but I had so much juice with this chick where... If a homie came, back then we had tobacco, right? And I'd be like, hey, how much tobacco you have in your property? And it would, I got, you know, I have a couple cans. I'd be like, all right. And I would get their name and number and I would give it to her. and say, hey, go and get the, all the tobacco out of the property. Boom, she would bring it. 
if I wanted a phone call or if a homie needed a phone, I'd be like, hey, come on, man. All right, I'll see what I could do, right? Well, for whatever reason, when me and Kong became Sally, she hated Kong's guts, right? And um, I didn't know what it was behind. It wasn't my business. Well, one day we're in the cell. And, 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 and I want you to know, Kong had lost his mother years before, right? So we're in the cell. And um, we actually had pencil leads that were colored pencil leads. You know, you know, when people get off on the main line, they, you know, bring whatever they bring back. And sometimes they'll bring stuff like that so they can hustle, you know, draw their cards, you know, do drawings and, pen and color pencil, whatever. So we had the leads. And um, Kong asked me to write a letter and write it as if it was his sister that had wrote him. And, you know, he would hook up an envelope and everything. And make it seem as though he got a letter. And he, what he wanted in the letter was that dad is very sick and could be dying any day. So I need you to call home. And when he tells me, I'm like, hey, homie, I don't, I don't want to write that type of letter home. But that's bad mojo. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, I'll get you a phone call. Let me get that old girl and I'll get you a phone call. And he's like, nah, that fucking Aina, she won't, she'll do whatever for you, but she won't do shit for me. And I'm like, listen, Holmes, let me, it's not going to be easy, but let me just try to, you know, get at her. Like, nah, 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 fuck that. So he asked the neighbor and the neighbor's like, yeah, I'll write that letter for you. So he got the letter written. And um, I remember it was Sergeant Pereira, Pereira. It's like a Portuguese name, I think. Sergeant Pereira. He got him to stop by the cell and he showed him, look, man, I got this letter, you know, this and that. And Sergeant looks at him and he's like, do you want to get on the phone right now? And he's like, nah, nobody will be home right now. And he's like, okay, I'm going to let the staff know. I'm going to leave a, a note in the logbook that you have a phone call coming. One phone call. When you feel your family's there, let the staff know and, and you know, you'll get the phone call. Now, Kong had just finished getting off on the yard, so he was on 10-day CTQ. I was wasn't on ctq so i go to yard i come back right and kong is talking about whacking the huda the the, the hyena that fucking i got in my pocket right he's like i'm gonna fucking whack that bitch tomorrow this and that and i was like whoa 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 what happened here you know what i'm saying like that's that's you know like it's all good right there like what happened? He's like, I asked her for a fucking phone call and she told me no and it's in the logbook and this and that. And it was a trip because it was like, like, homie, like, we, like, you made up a story, homie. Like, I'll get you on the phone. But he was like, nah, that ain't, that ain't even the point. You know, the point is this, this. And I was like, look, homie, let me rap to her and I'll get you a phone call, right? And he's like, I'm going to give you one shot at her. So I go to the yard and I'm telling him like, hey, I need to holler at you for reals, right? And after yard, when they stripped us out, she was standing there. And there was who has to escort us. And she told him, I'm escorting this one. So there's more to the story. Basically, she thought I wanted to, to kiss her because it's something that we had talked about, right? Something she had did, and this is embarrassing. It's a funny story for another day, but because of this, I'm just going to tell you. She went into the little mop closet, and I remember she, before she went in, she looked up to see where the cop was, the tower cop, and boom, jumped in, right? And she's looking at me like, come in here. I had completely forgot about that. My whole thing is, she's about to get whacked if she don't let my Sally on the fucking phone. So I was like, man, what are you doing? I need to talk to you. And she looked at me like, are you fucking serious? And she came out. Then I snapped like, oh, damn, I was supposed to tongue her down. So I was like, get back in. And she goes, I can't. I go, he looked at, she goes, he looked down now. So she grabbed two bars of soap, acting like that's what she was really looking for. Hands me two bars of soap. I mean, I'm cuffed up, so I grab it, boom. Well, as we entered B section, we're in the day room. I stopped and I said, listen, you need to listen to me right now. And she was like, what? I said, you need to get my Sally on the phone right now. Nah, fuck your Sally. You know, he's disrespectful. I said, listen, I'm telling you, you need to put him on the phone. Do not tell him no again. So she caught what I was saying, right? And she was like, 
I'm going to put him on the phone. I said, all right, cool. So I go back to the cell. At this time in New Folsom, and this is why he could say, like, I'm going to whack her next opportunity. Back then, the cops didn't carry anything on their waist. They had their keys, but they weren't walking with batons and all that. And if if they came to the cell for you to uh, to take care of something, you know, say it's medical or whatever it is, um, they would escort, they would uh, handcuff you, but they would tell your cellie to step to the back of the cell, right? They wouldn't have him cuff up or nothing. So when they open the door for you to get escorted out, your cellie couldn't run out there and handle his business. So that's why he was like, I'm going to get her this and that. Well, so I go to the cell and he goes to the back of the cell and I'm like, all right, cool. So he's not going to try to whack her yet. So I go in there, I, I uncuff, she takes off. No, excuse me. She says, hey, Kong, do you want a phone call right now? And he's like, yeah, I do. And she goes, let me finish bringing the yard in and then I'm going to come back and get you. He goes, all right. I get in there and I go, I told you, homie. And he was busting down. So I get out of the way. She comes after everything. She takes him to the phone. He's out there for like an hour. I bird bath. Boom. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. He's out there for about an hour, man. And he comes back, right? And uh, he just starts busting down again. Boom. He's facing the door. I'm on the bunk. I'm reading. And, uh, Excuse me. After a little while of busting down, he stops, he stands up, and he turns. He puts his back against the wall, and he slides down the wall. And he's in a squat, you know, like he's just standing there, sitting there, you know, squatted down. And he's looking at the toilet because the sink in the toilet's right there, and the door's right here, right? And he's looking at the ground. He's looking at the toilet, and I'm watching him. I'm like, damn, man, he's about to have a heart attack or something. So then I asked him, I said, hey, homie, you good? And he's just like, hey, he's dead, homes. And I was like, what? And he goes, when I called my, my, my sister's pad, my dad just fucking died, eh? And I was like, oh, fuck. I don't know if his dad was sick already. I know he was older. But I also knew that, or at least I believed that he felt that he put that on his dad by having that letter written. I know that from that point on, he had made it a point, he was extremely vocal, that any and every pegada, any and every stabbing, any hit that needed to go down in that seg, he wanted to do it. And the reason why is because we knew he was going to try to make the cops kill him. I remember talking to him and I was like, hey, homie, like, are you good though? And he was like, look, Holmes. Like I said, he was like in his 40s already. He was like, look, Holmes, it's embarrassing, but I'm going to keep it real. He goes, I'm a tecato. He goes, when I get out of prison, I don't have a job. I don't look for a job, homie. I, I just get high and do what I do, Holmes, but I always live with my mom and dad. He said, now they're both gone. What the fuck do I have to live for, eh? Like, I'm, I'm better off in here, you know? And I was like, nah, because he, he didn't have life. And, uh, you know, so everybody was, because everybody liked Kong, man. And I'll just tell you, I can't, I can't, you know, I don't want to make this video. It's already 20 minutes long almost. But I can tell you that. After that, Kong had gone somewhere. He, matter of fact, he wound up in Tehachapi after we had landed over there and we had went to Atsik for our stickings. He had whacked his, he had whacked a dude on the yard, then whacked his Sally in Atsik. I know he had went to High Desert and was just trying to put in all the way. He just didn't feel there was anything to get out for and any, there was no reason to live. So that story popped into my head today because of a conversation I had with someone else. Make sure, man, when, you know, those of you that are thinking, you know, I don't care how old you are, how young you are, man. If you're trying to get out of work or you're trying to get out of something and you think like, I'm going to just tell my boss that someone in my family's sick. Don't put yourself in the position that Kong found himself in because he never, ever forgave himself. I know and you know he didn't put that on his pops, but we can't 
make someone feel what we want them to feel. That's a burden that he put on his own heart and his own mind. I hope Kong has gotten out of prison. I hope he's sober. I hope he's healthy. But no matter what, over anything, I hope he's happy and at peace. That's my video for the day, man. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, everybody, please be safe, be smart, and tell the ones you love that you love them. I'm out.